Hello friends. Welcome to my new Java Enterprise Programming Tutorial Series video. Today, we will discuss, how to create and configure Java filters using web.xml. A Java filter is a server-side program that runs on a web or application servers. It dynamically intercepts and manipulate requests from a client, before a response is sent back to the client. Let's move ahead to NetBeans 8 and see how to create and configure Java filters using web.xml. Friends, in my previous tutorial video on how to create and configure Java servlets using web.xml, I have created a web application by name application 1. Link to video is provided in the description below. In application 1, I have created a hello world servlet which outputs an HTML, that prints hello world on the browser. In this tutorial, let's create a filter that will intercept request coming to the servlet. In order to create filter, go to source packages, right click. Go to new and select Java class. New Java class dialog box gets open. Provide a class name as, host filter. This Java class will be our filter. Provide a package name, com.hoverspot.filter to it. Click on finish. Host filter Java class gets created. It is for now a simple Java class. In order to make it a filter, Make this class implements filter interface. Present in Java X dot servlet package. This interface has three methods. Init method. Do filter method. And destroy method. These three methods are life cycle methods of a Java filter which are called by server. The server calls init method first, which initializes filter and loads it into the memory. Filter config object is passed to init method. This filter config interface is configured by server through web.xml which we will see later or annotations. This interface has methods to retrieve filter's name, its init parameters and servlet context associated with application. Do filter method is called next by the server. This method performs actual filtering work. It takes servlet request, servlet response and filter chain as arguments. We will discuss filter chain later in the tutorial. Destroy method is called by the server when filter has been taken out of service. It is called, when filter has been unloaded from memory, we will see it's working later. Moving back to host filter. Let's implement all abstract methods present in filter interface. All method throws unsupported operation exception, let's remove them and add our code into it. init method initializes the filter then do filter performs filtering operation and then destroy method gets invoked when filter is no longer required for this tutorial let's use do filter method to filter out the ip address of the remote host along with its port and log it into server's log create a string variable host Using get remote host method of request to extract remote host, and assign it to host variable. Create a int variable port. Using get remote port method of request to extract remote port, 
and assign it to port variable. Moving ahead. In order to log remote host and port into server log, we need servlet context instance. Servlet container initializes filter by filter config object. This filter config object has reference to servlet context, which we actually want. In order to access this filter config from init method to do filter method, we create a filter config instance variable. And in init method we assign filter config instance created by servlet container to it. Thus, now we can access filter config instance in do filter method as well. Using get servlet context method in filter config. We access servlet context and call log method to log remote host and port to it. After pre-processing the request, we need to pass it to next filter in chain. There can be multiple filters applied to a request. There is a interface filter chain which represents such a filter chain. Calling do filter method over a filter chain causes next filter to get invoke. Request and response are passed to it. In our case, it is a single filter. Thus, it is end of the chain, so request and response finally traverses to servlet and gets processed. In order to test whether these methods, such as init, do filter and destroy are called in filter life cycle, we provide a log to these methods. It will also demonstrate in what order these methods are called. Thus, our filter gets created, but for now it's just a normal Java class. In order to configure it as Java filter, we need to define its configuration in web.xml file. Let's go ahead to web.xml and define it. Filters are very similar to servlets. As servlets are configured through servlet and servlet mapping. Filters are configured through filter and filter mapping. Let's create a filter tag. Filter tag has a tag by name, filter name. Filter name is provided into it. In our case, let's provide a name to our filter as host filter. Filter tag also has a tag by name, filter class. Fully qualified class name of the filter is provided to it. In our case, fully qualified filter class is com.hoverspot.filter.host filter. Moving ahead. Let's configure filter mapping to it. Create a tag by name filter mapping.
filter mapping tag has a tag by name, filter name. Filter name is provided into it. Host filter is the name, which is same as what we provided to filter tag. Filter mapping also has a tag by name, URL pattern. URL pattern here we provide is slash asterisk. It signifies that all request coming to slash which is context root, goes to filter map to com.hoverspot.filter.host filter. Let's go to hello world servlet and run it. Let's see whether our filter intercepts it. It starts glassfish server and deploy application 1 to it. It executes hello world servlet and prints hello world. If you see URL, then after application 1 comes the URL pattern, which filter intercepts and before coming to hello world servlet. Let's go to server logs and see whether it printed info we logged into host filter. If you see closely in logs, it printed. Initializing host filter, which we logged into init method. Thus, init method gets executed when filter initializes. Then, it prints remote host and remote port, logged into do filter method. But, destroy method logs didn't got printed. It is because filter is still loaded into memory. Let's go to services tab in NetBeans, and under server section, go to applications and undeploy application 1. Before undeploying application, server unloads filter and executes destroy method. It logs destroying host filter into the server logs. So friends, go through this video 2 to 3 times so that, how to create and configure Java filters using web.xml concept gets more clear to you. Hope you like this video. Please give 1 minute to like, share, comment or subscribe my channel, or you can visit my website at www.hubberspot.com.